Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Initial DIY Mods. So today we're going to show you how to upgrade your methanol injection kit from a single injection. Uh, a lot of people do this on the post intercooler side, uh, just after the throttle body as well. Um, we're going to go to a multi-port direct injection system. So basically what that means, we're going to inject in the ports similar to how the regular port fuel injection on a multi-port injection car would work, uh, but instead of and instead of injecting gasoline to the engine, we're going to inject in a methanol and water mix. Uh, I'm going to do 50-50. Of course, if you do whatever you want to do, you can do water. Uh, up to 50-50 meth water is recommended. Uh, more than that, you don't get much significant gain uh, with methanol. Like running straight meth, you don't get um, a much higher gain with it. Uh, part of the issue is that the water absorbs a lot of the heat inside, a lot of the latent heat, and carries that out with the exhaust. Um, after combustion. So that's one of the benefits of the combination of the two. And then the other benefit is going to be, of course, that uh, straight methanol is, uh, is extremely flammable, uh, very low flash point. Uh, so it's very dangerous to have. So if it catches fire, it also burns invisible uh, or clear, burns, burns out of the human spectrum. So you can't see it, uh, which makes it extremely dangerous uh, when there's a fire and you can't see that something's on fire. So uh, there's obviously a hazard there. So the main tools you're going to need here, obviously you're going to need to be able to remove your intake manifold from your car. Um, you're going to need a drill or a drill press. You're going to need some bits, obviously. Um, you're going to need your methanol injection upgrade kit. Now Devil's Own does sell kind of a complete package, so to speak. Uh, it's got your distribution block for four cylinder, six cylinder, and eight cylinder cars. Um, if you're any of the weird ones in between, just you'll think of something at that point. If you're a five cylinder, use a six, block one off, whatever. Um, also, you're gonna need the nozzles, you're gonna need the nozzle holders, and then you're gonna need the lines and everything else to go with it. This video does assume that you have and already have a methanol injection kit set up. If you don't have one, uh, the next video coming out will be an overview of how to install a methanol injection kit, and I'll show you and walk you through everything that I did uh, for my kit. So, um, you're obviously going to need not only the drill set, you're going to need a tap set. And what that is, you're going to be able to tap or thread the hole that you drilled uh, in your intake manifold in order to put in this fitting. So you can actually get the drill and tap set. Um, I got mine at a garage sale for like 15 bucks, um, barely used. But you can obviously find Harbor Freight has them, uh, Home Depot has them. They're a little bit more expensive uh, from Home Depot. but. You can also just buy the size that you want, uh, where with Harbor Freight, um, at least the kits that I saw, you had to buy the entire drill and tap set. Now, some manifolds, you can't do this. If you have a plastic manifold, it's not recommended that you do this. If you have um, extremely thin aluminum manifolds, it's not recommended that you do this. Uh, there all are alternatives to get away with that. One of the things you can do, if, you're, if yours is aluminum and too thin, you can actually buy inserts and I don't have any here with me, um, but I can show you basically they're threaded, pre-threaded uh, pre blocks and basically you just put those on and you just TIG weld those um, into the aluminum and everything kind of uh, just that simple, you just weld it in. Um, obviously if you don't have a welder, you have to take it to a shop, uh, whatever, so there are, might be other costs with that. Um, if you have a plastic manifold, it's not recommended that you do this, this method because plastic tends to crack so you really don't want to try and drill and tap. Usually it's relatively thin as well. So uh, one of the things you're going to want to make sure you do is uh, you'll do a bulkhead fitting uh, where you'll have a nut on, on the inside and then you'll have a nut on the outside and your fitting will run through that. So basically th thread the inside in and it's going to clamp down on that. You'll use some sealant in there as well. So there's different ways to do it for different vehicles. Uh, obviously research what's specific for yours. Feel free to ask any questions here. But uh, without further ado, let's get to the video. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to drill this. Um, I started doing the hand drill, and I realized that that wasn't very efficient. It wasn't coming out perfectly straight. It was a lot harder to apply the pressure consistently. So I ended up switching to the drill press for all the ones that I could reach on the drill press. And then I ended up having to do one of them by hand later.
You can see here that I'm using the tap to thread the hole. Uh, I'm doing this by hand here. However, I do end up switching to a, a drill later on. And I actually uh, just run that drill in, which you're technically not supposed to really do with a drill. Um, it's a bit aggressive, but I found that it, uh, if you're good enough with a, with a hand drill, you can actually do that and get away with it. Then I screwed in the nozzles. Uh, I put the nozzle holders on after that, and uh, from there just lined up all the lines. And I lined up all the nozzle holders the way I wanted my lines to, to route, and then uh, had everything set up and, and it worked out pretty well. You can see the routing here. So, uh, this is the first time I actually made a template uh, for my anything on my car. I'm usually not a template person, I just kind of freeform it and figure it out as I go. And because I have a welder and cutters and everything else, I can kind of screw up and fix it and not really be in too bad of a spot. <clears throat> what I did here, uh, I basically had a paper towel and some masking tape, and I laid everything out on the car and basically just kind of marked my holes and then marked out how I wanted everything to line up. And what I ended up doing was coming up with a configuration like this. And basically what that allowed me to do was mount my distribution block right here. And then I was actually able to mount right off that with one of the fittings. The line came in, this bolts down into the block uh, right on the timing cover, and it holds it relatively sturdy. It's not super, super rigid, but again, it doesn't really have to be for this part. Um, so that made it super easy. It took me probably 15 minutes to come up with that template for the um, distribution block for holding all the lines in place. And then from there, I ran right angle fittings out of the block, and that went straight back. And uh, three went up to the top of the manifold, three went down underneath to the bottom of the manifold. Super easy routing. Um, basically, all I had to do was trace that onto a piece of aluminum, um, sheet metal. Uh, I cut it on the bandsaw super quick and got everything trimmed up and dropped it in the car. You can see pictures right here. So uh, definitely really easy to do uh, with once you have the template. Probably should have used templates my entire life, but I've been too lazy to take the extra time to get paper and uh, I just do it with the metal. Um, but yeah, you'll waste less metal that waste less metal this way. So it works out really well And it's super cheap and really fucking easy <laughs> Since your lines are gonna run in before the throttle body in terms or after the throttle body uh, Between the valves and the throttle body you're gonna have vacuum on those nozzles I mean you either need to have six check valves on and of course check valves are not the most reliable They tend over time to either fail um, or they're just not um, very consistent, either they'll have some sort of dribble depending on how much vacuum you pull, um, or they're just annoying in general in terms of getting the space to fit. So I went ahead and upgraded to a solenoid, um, and basically the wiring was pretty straightforward, ran it straight to the controller. I have an AEM uh, methanol injection kit, and uh, I have a little bit of snow performance line from when I had a snow performance kit, so I used some of that. I used the Devil's Own uh, solenoid, and the Devil's Own six uh, port injection kit. So I've kind of mixed and matched three different kits. Um, side note, if you're using a snow performance kit, the line is a slightly different size, so it's not very snug fitting um, in the Devil's Own kit. So be sure that if you're buying lines from the other kits, that you do know that it's gonna fit, or that you get quick connect fittings from that hose supplier, so that you're not uh, stuck with any sort of leaks going into your engine uh, where you obviously don't want them So the actual the cost for this upgrade um, If you do the solenoid upgrade and you get some extra line I got like an extra six or eight feet because it's relatively cheap um, And you get the nozzles get the 90 degree fittings if you need them um, At first I had the straight fittings that came with the kit 
they were super annoying because they made everything had to like do a giant U-turn. Um, so I just got the 90 degree uh, short nozzles. They do swivel, so it made it really easy to just position everything. I could screw everything in and then just turn the nozzle to fit uh, and point the direction that I needed and then right off the distribution block. So I had one, two, three, one, two, three, um, which was nice. So the total cost was about $330 uh, with shipping. So it wasn't super insane. Um, granted, the methanol kit itself was like 350 bucks. So it is a kind of like buying another kit. Um, but again, it's it's not out of this world expensive. So um, it's also much better. You know exactly where everything is going in terms of distribution. So you can feel comfortable that your engine is actually uh, being tuned properly rather than assuming or guessing how much is going into each cylinder. So yeah, so basically just look forward to those videos once again. Leave comments, questions uh, in the comments below. Um, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't because why haven't you looked at the other turbo videos that I have? Um, yeah, more videos coming. I'm hoping to be able to do a lot more more frequently now that the wedding planning chaos is over. Um, and of course, more updates and shenanigans with the car to come. All right, thanks guys. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Digital DIY Mods. I'm gonna not pick my nose when I say that. It itched, sorry. <laughs>